and I skidded down and into a pile of rocks. Hello and welcome to part 13 of The Lockdown Getaway. Short stories from the adventures of a blind man. Now those of you who have tuned in to see some action-packed stories or videos, there's something for you coming up later. But for now I thought I'd tell a funny story about going blind. In late 1995 I'd noticed that my sight had started to get much worse. Fortunately, I had my annual assessment booked for February of 96, so when I went into the doctor, I told him what had been happening. Over the space of about three minutes, the doctor carried out several tests, made a few notes, and then very casually said to me that what little sight I had left most likely would be gone by the end of the year, and that I should get myself a guide dog and start learning Braille. With that, he then stood up and ushered me out of his office, telling me that if I needed to know anything more about my site, that I should make an appointment with his secretary. He then left me standing in the waiting room in a state of shock. Now, it took a wee while to come to terms with this shitty news, but eventually when I did, I booked myself an assessment with my local guide dog centre in Exeter, and as I was working at my old blind school, I spoke to the Braille teacher there and asked her if she wouldn't mind giving me a few Braille lessons. Fortunately, she was very happy to do this, and over the next few weeks, she taught me some of the basic stuff. Then we had the Easter break coming up, where we had a break from school for two or three weeks. I was planning to head back up north to Edinburgh to see friends and family, and as this was going to be a train trip of about six or eight hours, I thought this would make a great chance for me to do some of my Braille learning. So I borrowed a couple of books and took them on the train with me. I'd been on the train for a couple of hours when I decided I ought to get some work done. So I grabbed one of my books, popped it on the table, opened it up and started learning. However, the book on the table was fairly high and trying to read by fingertips meant that my hands were up here and after a wee while, this began to get a bit uncomfortable. So I thought what I'd do is I'd take the book off the table, pop it on my lap and read it there. And down here, it was much more comfortable. As I was reading, I would get confused with some words and maybe a bit grimace or frown. And other times I'd recognise a word and smile and maybe even laugh when I'd got a full word done. I'd been doing this for some time when I started to notice that other passengers on the train who were passing when they were walking up and down the aisle were kind of walking a little bit slower and staring at me. I reckoned that they, they probably hadn't seen a blind guy reading Braille before so not to worry. But as this went on for quite some time, it then dawned on me that what they could see was this guy sat with his hands under the table in his lap, with his hands moving about every now and then, a wee frown or a wee giggle to himself. And I then realised that people probably didn't think I was reading my braille book. I quickly grabbed my book and brought it up and put it on the table and for the next hour or so, every time the train stopped at a train station, I half expected the transport police to come on board and escort me off for committing some lewd act. I'd like to say that my guide dog assessment went much better than the Braille, but it didn't. But that's a story for next time. Now, for those of you who have tuned in for some extreme sports action, I'll pass you over to him. Thank you. In 1999, I bought myself a mountain board. Mountain boards are basically off-road skateboards with bigger decks and big chunky wheels. Over the next couple of years, Carl Sawyer and I would take our boards out and race them down big grassy slopes. Now these big grassy slopes were obstacle free because after all, I am blind. Then we heard from a group of mountain boarders who were heading up to Dartmoor to a place called Haytor to spend the day boarding and they invited us to join them. We also invited Carl's brother Jason to join us and the three of us jumped in the car and headed up to Hator. On arrival, we saw that the other guys had set up a little route between the rocks and with a few jumps over the rocks. Now, although I'm quite, you know, adventurous, that route looked a little bit too much for me being blind. So I went off and created my own little route between the rocks. I walked down it a few times and committed it to memory. I had to go forward 10 or 15 metres down the hill, then turn right, along another 20 metres, turn left, and so on. On my first run, I took it fairly gingerly just to make sure everything was right. 
and it was good. On the second run, I went a little bit faster, on the third, even faster. After about an hour of this, I was going at fairly fast speeds for what I could see. On this particular run, I got all sus, zooming down, turning right, zooming along, turning left, everything was going well. And when I came in for the finish, it was a big grassy area where I could do a skid finish. Unfortunately on this one, because I was going so fast, I did my skid finish, lost control of my board, my board shot out from underneath me, I landed on my back of my bum and I skidded down and into a pile of rocks. It was my bum and my thigh that took the major impact. And within a minute or two, I had major bruising to this area. And a minute or two after that, my leg seized up and I could no longer bend it. Now when you can't bend your leg and you're mountain boarding, it's not good. So I decided to call it a day. I made my way back down towards the cars and en route I passed the other boarders who had just decided to get a big ramp out to do some jumps. They invited me to join on the jumps and I said, no, my leg's knackered and I don't think it's a good idea, but I'll watch you. So I spent the next few minutes watching a few of them one at a time, jumping over, taking big air, and it looked really good. I then decided that maybe the bruising and the seizing of the leg wasn't that bad. I know that when you do ramps, you're supposed to be able to bend your leg to move the board and that, but maybe I could bend my leg. Maybe my leg wasn't that badly injured. So someone led me up to the top of the runway and told me the general direction straight down. I headed down and I could hear the voices of all the guys shouting and cheering and I headed towards them. The voices got louder and louder, then quieter and quieter as I ran past them and totally missed the ramp. So I had to go a second go. So I was led back up to the top of the runway and this time Jason said that he would shout for me and guide me verbally down to the ramp. And when I got closer, he would wave his helmet around above the ramp so when I could hear him, I would then look for his helmet, see his helmet, hit the ramp. And I did. I shot off down, I could hear the noise, going towards Jason's voice, heading towards it. I could then make out his helmet. It was getting waved about. I hit the ramp. Well, and the rest is on this film. I hope you enjoy it. Wasn't big and wasn't clever. Wasn't big and wasn't clever. <laughs> are, you, are you in pain? Uh, not at this particular moment, but no. I don't want to move.
Thanks for watching. I will be posting more lockdown getaways every Monday and Friday for the next few weeks. So stay safe and if you want to find out more about my adventures, go to extremedreams.co.uk. My public speaking, dean-talks.com. Follow me at Twitter at dean underscore talks. On Facebook, Dean Dunbar Blind and Dangerous. And if you want to see any more of my videos, go to my YouTube channel, DinoD69. Thank you.